Hello everybody, Michael here for Tats Get Imperialis with episode 5 of Codex Analysis Tyranids. Today we are doing the Fast Attack section. If you have missed any of the last four episodes, make sure to click the link in the description to the Tyranids playlist where you'll be able to watch all four of the previous episodes. I thoroughly recommend you watch them all, episode 1 and 2 in particular, for special rules and for war gear. So the Fast Attack section is... Probably because of the reliance on a lot of units in elite and heavy support is one of the underused sections. It has some good units, don't get me wrong, but flyers aside, you don't really use most of the units in here. So, let's get going, shall we? Tyranid Shrikes. They are weapon skill 5, BS 3, strength 4, toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 4, 3 attacks, leadership 10, and a 5 plus save, which is exactly the same as a Tyranid Warrior, only with a slightly worse armor save. They are armed with Devourers and Scything Talents, so they are AP 6 in melee. And they also have a 18 inch range strength for AP nothing assault 3 gun. They have Jump Infantry with Shadow in the Warp, Synapse Creature and Very Bulky. They cost 90 points for 3 and you can add an additional 6 for 30 points per model, making a full size squad cost 270 points. One model may take a basic bio cannon. So for basic bio cannons you have either a Barbed Strangler or a Venom Cannon. As I said with Tyranny of Warriors, I generally think Barbed Stranglers are more commonly used, but I think Venom Cannons also have some value, being Strength 6 AP4 instead of Strength 5 AP5, although the Blast is smaller and they lack pinning. Although, is the range the same? The range is the same. So any model may take items from basic bioweapons and melee bioweapons. So for basic weapons, you can swap your Devourer for either... Scything, another pair of Scything Talons if you want the extra attack instead of some shooting. Spine Fist, which will be 3 shots, strength 4, twin linked. No, sorry, 3 AP5, twin linked, but 3 shots. Um, or a Death Spitter. Uh, Death Spitters are generally better because they are strength 5 AP5 instead of uh, strength 4 AP dash with no drawbacks, but they are slightly more expensive. In terms of melee weapons, you can swap your Scything Talons for Rending Claws, which gives you AP5 and Rending. Uh, bone Swords for Power Weapons and Instant Death on a 6, 15 points. Or a Lash Weapon Bone Sword, 20 points, making you same as Bone Sword, so AP3 initiative, uh, but your initiative goes up to um, 7 in melee, basically. So you'll be uh, melee, Instant Death on a 6, AP3, but also with plus 3 initiative. So they're expensive, they do make your strikes cost 50 points each, but they will do the most damage. Personally, I think if you want to stay in the air or jumping, uh, Death Spitters are the way to go. If you want to run for more melee, I think a pair of Rending Claws is the cheap option, although Bone Swords slash Lash Whip will also do you pretty well. The unit may take Adrenal Glands for 4 points, giving them Fleet and Furious Charge. Because of your Jump Packs, you don't need Fleet as much, but Furious Charge will definitely help, particularly if you are running with something like um, a Lash Whip and Bone Sword. You really need those attacks to hit. Um, or do the damage, should I say. Uh, toxin Sacks for Poisoned. Uh, if you are not going to be buffing yourself in any way with Psychic Powers or whatever, I think Toxin Sacks are kind of useful because you're on the Strength 4 and you can't really get any worse apart from with um, Guardsmen. And Flesh Hooks, 4 points models, so that would be 6 inch range Strength User, so 4 AP, nothing Assault 2. Decent weapon, nothing particularly broken, but I think it could have a little bit of value. Right, Shrikes. They are underused, I think, because they are basically warriors with jump packs that cost the same as normal warriors, but they're not troops. So I think they're good, and they're good for things like um, gargoyles, because there are no um, synapse creatures that can keep up, with the exception of uh, actual um, blind monster creatures like hive tyrants. Nothing else can keep up with gargoyles. So I do think they have some value, but I think their main problem is the same as Tyranny Warriors, they die very easily to instant death and their save is actually worse so they're bolter breakfast raveners 90 points also and their stat line is almost identical one of skill 5 bs3 strength 4 toughness 4 3 wounds initiative 5 uh, with three attacks leadership 6 and a 5 up saves they're two pairs of styling talents and they are beasts rather than infantry so they do move rather quickly two pairs of styling talents mean they'll get their extra attack in melee strike at ap6 and they are initiative 5 as well they have Instinctive Behaviour Feed, uh, which is kind of bad considering um, their bad armor saves and the fact they'll quite likely do some damage to themselves. Uh, very bulky, and they have Deep Strike, meaning that they don't have to run up the board, they can just Deep Strike in, which is kind of what you need them to do. 
You include up to six additional ones in the squad. Again, full size squad to 70 points. Any random exchange, one pair of styling talents for rending calls. You do not lose the bonus attack, but you just get AP5 and rending. So that's a good swap. Any Ravener may take one of the following. So Spine Fist, so that would be three shots, uh, straight three AP5 to a late. So, eh, three points model, it's okay. Not particularly broken. Uh, Devourer, five points model, basically turning them into Tyranid Warriors on steroids, but without the Synapse boost. Um, good, I think. Decent swap. It's not even a swap, it's just an upgrade. And Death Spitters, if you're against Guard, or you think you're playing a meta where there's lots of Guard, lots of Orcs, Lots of things with bad armor saves. Death Spitters are really, really good. One Ravener Brood may add the Red Terror, who is an old character from the lore, who I believe um, has just made a reappearance. So he is also a beast and a character, and he is weapon skill 6, BS 3, strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, initiative 8, and a 4 plus save, which is pretty tanky compared to Raveners. Plus 1 toughness, plus 1 save, and he's a better fighter in melee and has more attacks. He has two pairs of styling tiles and a prehensile pincer. The prehensile pincer is strength 6 AP5 melee weapon, not buffed in any way by anything. He has deep strike, of course, instinctive behavior feed, very bulky, and he also has a rule called swallow hole. Swallow hole. If the red terror hits with four or more attacks in a phase, excluding its prehensile pincer, so like if all of its attacks hit, all but one, actually, because you'll be charging in some cases. And you'll have two pairs of silent talents, so you can get four hits. Uh, you may nominate a single enemy infantry, jump infantry, or jetpack infantry model in base contact. So, Tau commanders, space marine captains, anybody in base contact, basically. This model must pass a single invulnerable save, if it has one, or die. That's it. Oh, very bulky or extremely bulky models cannot be swallowed whole, so... Things like Tau Battlesuit Commanders actually cannot be eaten, but Space Marine Captains on a four on a three down are dead. Tau Ethereals, dead. You, you get my point. You do there is a quite a heavy requirement for it, that having four attacks, but you are initiative five, so you should get to attack first. Weapon skill six means you're hitting on threes, and if you've got the charge, then two thirds of your attacks hit, that's four out of six, you can swallow someone. It's kind of useful. It doesn't say that it exchanges all your attacks, it is you still get to hit with those four strength five attacks, which is very, very useful. So the Red Terror is good, but um, because he's Raveners and he's melee, I do think there are some problems with it, mainly that they'll die before they get a chance. Raveners die, even, die basically the same way as Shrikes, which is to everything that looks like a Bolter or strength eight. Um, and the Red Terror doesn't really do much to mitigate that. <sighs> Excuse me. Even though he is tougher and has more wounds, no, or better save, shall I say. He is good, but I think he's slightly overcosted, perhaps. Sky Slasher Swarm. These are basically flying rippers. Their jump infantry, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 2, trait toughness 3, 3 wounds initiative 2, 4 attacks legit 5, 6 up save. Fear the swarm with instinctive behavior feed. You'll still need to take the test. 54 points, uh, so 18 points per base. You can add an additional 6 meaning that a full-size squad, 9 times 18 is 144 points. The unit may take Spine Fist, 4 points of base, so 4 Twin Link shots, straight 35, see no problem in that. Uh, you are BS2, so you're probably not going to hit that many, but you are Twin Linked. Uh, may take Toxin Sacks, 4 points of base, uh, yes, probably, in most cases. Adrenal Glands, 5 points per base, no. I mean, yeah, it's nice to have Furious Charge, but nah, I don't think so. Toxin Sacks will do you a lot of value, though, because you'll mostly be hitting on or wounding on fires. You've just got to actually hit first. Bearing in mind, though, that if you take Spine Fist and Toxin Sacks, you have basically made it one and a half times more expensive per base. Basically, Sky Slashes are exactly the same as Rippers, but faster and more expensive. They're good, but they're not that good. I think you can steer clear of them in favour of things like Shrikes and Raveners and Flyers. Gargoyles. Um, flying Gaunts, basically. 60 points for 10, so 6 points a model. Weapon skill, listed skill, strength and toughness, 3. 1 wound, initiative 4, 1 attack, leadership, 6, and a 6 upset. It's exactly the same as a termagant. They're armed with a flesh bore, so it's basically a bolt pistol. 12-inch uh, range, strength 4, 55, assault 1. Yeah, it's a bolt pistol, basically. And blinding venom. Is that a weapon, or is that a rule? Or is it a biomorph? Blinding venom. 
can exchange its normal attacks for a weapon that is strength 3 AP nothing, uh, melee, blind, poison 6 up. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, it's a buff. If basically you swap, uh, if you're charging, you swap your two attacks for one attack that can only wound on a 6, but has blind. Uh, against monster creatures, alright. Against space brains, alright. But against most things, nah, you're best with normal attacks. Uh, there is Instinctive Behavior Hunt, which is kind of nice, although going to ground with something like Jump Inventory is pretty bad. Uh, you can include up to 20 additional gargoyles, 6 points model, full size squad 180 points, Metic Adrenal Glands, or Toxin Sack for 2 points per model. Neither of these really particularly apply. I don't know if Toxin Sacks actually buffs the Blinding Venom. It says it's Poison 6 up, but if all your melee attacks are Poison 4 up, does that buff count? I don't think so, otherwise that would be kind of broken. But Gargoyles are basically like Termagants, but faster. Good at objective camping, better than Termagants at objective camping because of Hunt rather than Lurk. Um, but they're mostly used as annoying units. Uh, if you've got some Shrikes with them, they can be quite scary because the Gargoyles just eat the bullets and then the Shrikes come in and say thank you very much, om nom nom, yada yada, so on. But um, they're alright, I guess. I guess. Then we come to the two flyers, uh, or the two flying monster creatures in this section. I can't really say flyers because um, we have flying monster creatures in the HQ section. Um, do we have any other flying monster creatures that can be flying? No, we don't. We just have these two and the hive tyrant. So we have the harpy, 135 points uh, for weapon skill, ballistic skill 3, strength and toughness 5 with 5 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, leadership 10, 4 plus save. It has Scything Talons, a Twilight Stranglethorn Cannon, and Spore Mine Cysts. Now, a Stranglethorn Cannon is 36 inch range, strength 6 AP 5, Assault 1, Large Blast Pinning. Very good at doing ground control, and it's twin linked, which is nice. The Spore Mine Cysts uh, is strength 4 AP 4, Assault 1, Barrage, Large Blast, Spore Bomb, Spore Burst. They basically work exactly the same way as bombs, but bombs didn't exist when this codex came out. So as far as those two little rules go, Spore Bomb and Spore Burst, uh, it's done during the movement phase after swooping, large blast on a model of Harpy's Path over, scatter it D6, Harpy's other weapons can choose a different target, same as just a bomb basically. Spore Burst, if no models are hit, so if your scatter is appalling and it just misses, place a Spore Mine Cluster of D3 models under the blast marker before removing it. Uh, spore Mine Clusters are at the end of this section, so I will talk about those a little bit later on. It is fearless, but has Instinctive Behaviour Hunt. Now, with Instinctive Behaviour Hunt, it is fearless, so it can't go to ground anyway, so it just treats it as prowl, alright, never mind. I was warning you about go to ground, but you can't go to ground when you're flying, but you're fearless, so you just treat it as prowl anyway, my apologies. It also has Sonic Screech, which means that enemies have minus 5 initiative in the, turn they are ch in the phase they are charged by a Harpy, meaning that the Harpy will always go first. Unless something is initiative 10, in which case they go at the same time. But I can't think of anything that's initiative 10 off the top of my head. So it just basically means you get the strike first in melee. And you need to, really, with strength 5, weapon skill 3, 3 attacks. You need to be going first. Mary places Twin Link Stranglethorn Cannon with a Twin Link Heavy Venom Cannon. Giving it um, a Twin Link Strength 9 AP4 Assault 1 Blast. Uh, kind of like Barbed Strangler 2 Venom Cannon. It depends on what you really want it for. I think Heavy Venom Cannons are, on the whole, better, but they don't do as much versatile stuff as Stranglethorn Cannons do, but they can pop vehicles, which is always nice. You may take one of the following, Stinger Salvo or Cluster Spines, for 10 and 15 points respectively. Cluster Spines are 18 inch strength, 5 assault, 1 large blast AP dash, kind of nice for 15 points, complements the Stranglethorn Cannon quite well. And the, oh, I forgot the name of it, Stinger Salvo is 18 inch range, strength 5 AP4, assault 4, which really complements the Stranglethorn Cannon nicely and does a little bit more with the Heavy Venom Cannon because they're both AP4. Personally, I would prefer the Stinger Salvo just because it's got an AP value and it's a bit more reliable, although because of the BS, um, the blast might be a little better for you. Mater Guidance from Biomorphs, so you could have Acid Blood. You don't really want to get into melee, you never want to really land. Toxin sacks, again, you're not going to be landing. Adrenal glands, uh, same thing again. Basically, all of these biomorphs are based around melee, and you never want to be in melee with this guy, except for regeneration, which can be kind of broken on this guy. I mean, it does make 165 points, 
but he's basically never going to die. Think about that. Uh, Hive Crow, now, this is your anti-flyer mechanism. It's 155 points and has exactly the same stat line as a Harpy. 3355553104+. Three, three, five, 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 three, plus. It's a flying monster creature, of course, and it is armed with Scything Talent, four Tentaclids, and a Drool Cannon. Now, a Drool Cannon is a Strength 6 AP4 Flamer without Torrent. I'm going to point that out. So it's better than a Heavy Flamer by Strength, but it does jack all to Marines, which is something you need to be aware of. And the Tentaclids are 36 inch range, Strength 5 AP5, Assault 1 Haywire, which is what they're useful for, one use only, but they're also seeking. I'm hoping it's going to tell me what seeking means here. Nope, I'm going to have to go into their rules. I, basically, I think, if I remember correctly, it's just twin linked against flyers. If a model makes this shooting attack with this weapon against a zooming flyer or a swooping flying monstrous creature, it rerolls failed to hit rolls. Basically meaning that your tentaclids are far, far more likely to actually hit something and do some damage, which is important because you only have four of them, and they are finite. Uh, it is fearless, but instead of instinctive behavior hunt, it has instinctive behavior feed. It cannot eat itself because it's a single model, but I think feed could be a problem, particularly if you're flying about. If you need to, I don't know, switch mode, then you'll be forced to go into melee, which you might not want to do. It also has raking strike, which basically means that when it vector strikes, it vector strikes at strength eight. You thought Helldrakes had a strong vector strike. This thing's strength 8, which basically means it can fly over, hit you with a strength 8 vector strike, and then hit you with a hail wire missile. How's your life? Yeah, not good to be a vehicle around a hive crow something. Uh, it may take a stinger salve on cluster spines. Um, I think here uh, the cluster spines are worse because they're a blast weapon. I think the stinger salvo complements the draw cannon a little better because it's uh, shots and it's AP4 as the draw cannon is. May take biomorphs, kind of like with the um, harpy. I won't be taking many of them, although regeneration could be kind of useful. Finally, the spawn mine cluster I mentioned earlier. It is weapon skill nothing, ballistic skill nothing, strength one, toughness one, one wound, initiative one, no attacks, leadership one, and no save. And it costs 15 points for that. You get three spawn mines for that. Now, with the Spore Mine Sis, you get D3. Let me just remind you of that. They have Deep Strike and Fearless, which is fine, I suppose. But they also have Floating Death and Living Bomb. So, Floating Death, they move three inches and half run or charge move. So, the maximum they can run is a half D6, and their charge is a half of two D6. It's not D3 and D6 exactly. You have to actually check the roll. Ignore difficult terrain, but still take dangerous terrain tests, but cannot attack because they have no attacks. Instead, at initiative 10, center the large blast over one spore mine. Models are hit at strength 4, plus 1 for each additional spore mine in the cluster. So between um, 4 if there's only 1 left, and 9 if there is a full-size squad of 6 for each additional one. These are AP4, ignores cover, which is alright. Then remove the entire cluster from play. So... They're all right. They also have living bomb. I forgot about that. Uh, Non-scoring, non-denial, do not award victory points, do not count to combat resolution, obviously, because they just blow up and then you lose the combat anyway. Um, they can't claim objectives for you. That's the main thing you need to be aware of. Um, or deny your opponent objective by being close to one. You don't deny them the objective. But if you're playing kill points, they don't get anything for them, which is kind of nice because considering they're going to suicide anyway, that's fine. You can have to an additional three for five points per spore mine, meaning a full size squad is, of course, 30 points. And that will give you a strength nine blast, assuming everybody lives. They won't. You can guarantee that literally your opponent will just point something at them and they'll die. But that's a squad shooting being taken out of the game. And that's always a good thing. As far as the harpy goes, now that I've had a look at them, um, I do think uh, spore burst is very useful. Because once they come down, it's like they've dropped in and they've... Hello! Hello and they're going to cause quite a threat doing that. So, that is the end of this episode. In review, Shrikes are underused, but they are glass cannons. They die very easily to blast. Uh, Raveners, same thing, but uh, without the flying, they just deep strike. But the Red Terror, probably slightly overpriced, but it could be useful for you. 
Sky Slashers, see everything I said about Rippers, but they're more expensive. Gargoyles, see everything I said about Gaunts, but without troops, and they're more expensive. Um, but they're a good um, distracting unit. Harpies, kind of cool. Uh, nothing particularly overpowered. Um, I would recommend probably going Venom Cannon Stinger Salvo, or Strangle Thorn Cluster Spice, depends on your preferred loadout. Uh, Hive Crone, just good. Stick Regen on it if you really want to make your opponent cry, and I would always recommend a Stinger Salvo. Spore Man Clusters, you, if you're going to run a Harpy, this is pointless taking these. And to be honest, they are just a point sink and a slot sink. So if you're not playing Unbound, or you're playing Battleforge, it's a fast attack slot you're going to have to eat. So that concludes this video. Next up will be the last episode in the series where we'll do the heavy support as well as my final thoughts on the Codex. Thank you for watching. My name is Michael for Tats Get Imperialis, and I will see you all again.